Hey guys, welcome back. In today's video, we'll be taking a very close look at an electric motor overload protector. Overload protectors are used in all types of electric motors, but most commonly seen in swimming pool, well pump, sprinkler, as well as hermetically sealed refrigeration and air conditioned compressor motors. The two most common types of overload protectors are two wire and three wire. Both are used in series with the power supply to an electric motor and in the event of excessive load or higher than normal operating temperature, the overload protector will cut off power to the motor until it cools down. In a couple of minutes, I'm going to explain in detail how they're typically wired, how to test them, and the most common causes of a triggered overload protector. Okay, let's take a closer look at this one. You can see right over here is a brass adjustment screw has a special tool that grabs this so it can rotate counterclockwise or clockwise. There are three terminals, but only two are used. Take a look at the opposite side. You can see inside there's this metal disc and it has a tab on each side. You may see these with one large metal disc covering the end and it's going to operate very similar to this one, but this one does have the other side of that brass screw or adjustment screw connect to the center of the disc and it's very hard to tell but this metal disc is actually convex on this side so it's slightly domed and there's a contact point under this tab as well as on this side in a little bit I'm going to disassemble this to show you this disc is a bimetallic disc you have two dissimilar metals bonded together and when heat is applied to the metals one is going to expand at a faster rate than the other and as a result of the difference in expansion it's going to cause this disc to flex in the opposite direction when it flexes in the opposite direction it's going to disconnect power to the circuit or in this case the motor okay so right over here is an exaggeration of that metal disc the red is one metal and it's bonded to a different metal on top that is black once these two pieces of metal are heated, what's going to happen, the red piece of metal is going to expand more than the black piece of metal. As a result, the top of this dome is going to push downward. As the red layer continues to expand at a faster rate than the black layer, it's going to continue to push downward until it reaches a point where it pops and becomes convex. When that happens, the circuit is opened. If you look on the back side, you're going to see there's numbers. It says number one, two, and three. And in a minute, when I show you the wiring diagram, you're going to understand what each one of those means and how you can easily test this to find out if it's working properly. Now, let me flip this over again. I just want to show you something. Now, in the middle, you can see that this is pulling down on that disc to make a trigger at a lower temperature what you would have to do is tighten this brass pin in the right direction so that it pulls down. It applies more pressure to the center of this disc. By doing that, it's going to make this less concave. It's going to take up some of the tension on that disc. And when it's heated, it's going to pop in the opposite direction much easier. If you wanted to make this trip at a higher temperature, you would unscrew this all the way out just to the point where there's just a little bit of pressure touching the top of this disc and that's going to be the highest temperature setting. To demonstrate, I'm going to take my heat gun, we're going to heat up the face of this overload protector and you're going to see when this gets hot enough, it's going to pop in the opposite direction. When an electric motor is cold, you should have continuity between pin one and pin two. If you don't, that's going to indicate a fault with the overload protector. For this demonstration, I'm going to connect this up to my digital multimeter, leave it on a continuity alarm setting. Then I'm going to take my heat gun and direct it right at that disc. When the sound on my digital multimeter turns off, you're going to know that the circuit has opened. And as soon as it cools down, it'll pop back into position and current will flow again. There it is. Now testing the temperature at which this will trigger is very simple. 
If you have a toaster oven and a digital multimeter with a thermocouple, you're going to use degrees Celsius and you're going to set the toaster oven temperature just a little below the temperature of that disc. This disc here is 140 C, so I would set my toaster oven around 120 C. Leave this facing the door so you can see it, and you're slowly going to increase the temperature of the oven until you see this pop. When it pops, you'll see the temperature displayed on your digital multimeter, and if it's lower than it should be or higher, you can easily adjust it from that screw in the back. Now before I go over the wiring diagram, I first want to disassemble this so you can take a look at the inside. And usually you're going to see the temperature rating for that bimetallic disc stamped either on the disc or on the side of the overload protector. This one here says 140C. So I turn this around. I'm just going to grab this right here. Unscrew that. In this case, it's clockwise to take some pressure off that disc, which is going to make the temperature higher. And if you want to increase the temperature, you would go counterclockwise. So we go all the way in. I think we're pretty much there. Let's take this off. Okay, you can see right here is that resistive wire between pin 2 and pin 3. This is pin 1 and pin 2. You can see the contact points on the back of that bimetallic disc. They're going to be making contact with pin 1 and pin 2. And here's a closer look. You can see it's convex right there. And you have the two contact points. Not all overload protectors will reset on their own as they cool. Some, like the one you see right here, need to be manually reset. When the red button is pushed, it forces the bimetal disc to pop in the opposite direction. In this image right here, you're looking at a sprinkler pump motor. The cover has been removed, and you can see the capacitor for the start circuit, the centrifugal switch, and a three-wire overload protector. The image you're looking at right here is a hermetically sealed air conditioned compressor. And if you look on the right, you're going to see where the overload protector is installed. Some compressors have internal overload protectors. Okay, let's take a look at the wiring diagram. Two images here, the one on the left is a two wire or two pin overload protector, and the one on the right is the three terminal or three wire. Over here is the resistive element that's inside the overload protector. This piece here between pin one and two, that is the bimetallic disc that's affected by the heat. You can see this one here with the two wire, current flows into pin one, through that metal disc, through that resistive element, and then into both windings together. On this one here with three wires, current flows in, across the opposite side, and then the run winding is connected to pin two, and then the start winding is connected after the resistive element. The only way this is going to open up the circuit is if there's an excessive load placed on the motor, causing more current to be drawn by the motor and increasing the level of heat. A fault with one of the windings, if one of them is shorted out, it's going to draw more current. More current flowing through this resistive wire is going to increase heating around that bimetallic disc, and you're also going to have higher levels of heat coming off the windings. Now besides excessive load or a problem with the windings, causing the overload protector to pop in the opposite direction, disconnecting power, you can also have a problem with the starting circuit for the motor. Starting windings are only supposed to be connected up for a split second just to get the motor to start and then it's removed from the circuit. So if you have a problem with the start capacitor, if the value has become way too low or it became short circuited, you're just going to hear the motor hum, it's not going to start up, this winding is going to become hot, and you're also going to have a lot of extra current flowing through the resistive element underneath that thermal disc, and it's going to cause the circuit to open up. Over here, the only difference is you don't have both windings connected together after the resistive element. The run winding is connected at this point here, and the start is connected there. And that is it. I hope you now have a very good understanding of how overload protectors work. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to rate thumbs up. 
share and check out my extensive video playlist for many other videos of interest to you. Thank you very much for watching.